Open the podcast bay door as hell. Welcome to episode 19 of Welcome to Geek Town. I'm your host, Kurt Onstead. I've been a proud geek all my life, being into role-playing games, sci-fi, fantasy, board games, and especially superheroes and comics. And I want to help others join me in those pursuits. But I've found that sometimes people can get overwhelmed or feel left out because they don't already have what some consider the requisite knowledge to be considered a fan. And that's where Welcome to Geek Town comes in. Here you can ask your questions without feeling like a gatekeeper is calling you out for not yet being fully versed in every aspect of your new interest. Before we get started, I'd like to emphasize that I'm always looking for new questions to answer for the podcast. Please send me anything you'd like to hear me talk about, or things you'd like to learn about various geeky subjects, to me at welcome to geektown at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. The question for this episode comes from Justin B., who has written in before. This time, his question is, where are all the female superhero movies? Who should be next? And are there any storylines that should be adapted? Good questions all. Now, as I write this, the latest trailer for the Captain Marvel movie dropped about half an hour ago, so they are coming. But let's look at a little history to see if we can figure out why the opposite sex has been so underrepresented. And then we can look to the future and make some guesses and wishes as to what's coming up for superheroines on the screen. Now, a couple of caveats before I get started. First, I'm going to be talking in generalities quite a bit. There are some exceptions to every rule, obviously, but in order to get to some of what I think are the reasons behind the lack of female superhero movies, I'm going to be painting with a somewhat broad brush. Secondly, I'm going to be talking about what I think is the reasoning from the point of view of executives at movie studios and comic book companies. These are not my opinions, but instead what I believe are the opinions of those in charge of choosing what movies get made next, and what characters get the spotlight. I am all for equal representation both on and behind the screen. And on the page as well. Unfortunately, that leads into one of the reasons there are fewer female superhero movies, which is that there are fewer female superhero comics, especially successful ones. Particularly during the big superhero booms in the 1940s and 60s, for every female lead character created, there were probably about four or five male characters although that ratio is definitely improving with the new characters being created today. And if you look at the monthly sales figures for comic books, you'll see that, except in unusual circumstances like a new number one issue, you're unlikely to find a female-led book in the top 50. There are a few teams, like the X-Men and the Avengers, that will have a largely female team makeup that can break into the top 20 or so, but the most popular characters are still mostly men. And the comic buying audience matches that as well, although that also has been slowly and steadily improving. There's actually some interesting dichotomies when you look at some statistics. One regular monthly study shows the number of Facebook fans of comic books and graphic novels, using likes as a statistic, shows that over 50% of that population is female and has been for a couple of years now. However, when it comes to purchasing comics, only 37% of books were purchased by women last year. 
It'd be interesting to investigate where that difference comes from, but that's beyond the scope of this episode. With fewer female heroes, and even fewer of them being successes in the comics, you can see where movie executives might be more reticent to bring those women to the screen. But there's another reason beyond that which applies specifically to the movies. For those of us who remember video stores, where movies were classified into just a few very general genres, superhero films would be categorized under the action-adventure umbrella. And in that genre, there have also been very few starring women, with only a couple of real successes like the Hunger Games franchise. Movie executives, for the most part, are very risk-averse, so it's more difficult to get a studio to agree to greenlight a film that doesn't easily fit into what they already know works. For a long time, it was difficult to get any superhero movie made that didn't star Batman because of their history at the box office. And the few female superhero movies that did get made before the superhero boom started were critical and commercial failures, making it even less likely that another would be released in the future. But now that superheroes are big business at the box office, things are starting to change. Wonder Woman became the most successful of the films in the DC Extended Universe, and the sequel to that film is hitting theaters next November. There are also plans for a Harley Quinn and or Birds of Prey movie. The Birds of Prey are a team consisting of all female characters, mostly from the Batman family. On the Marvel side, we have Captain Marvel being released in March. Before the X-Men get fully absorbed into the MCU, we have X-Men Dark Phoenix and New Mutant films, both of which seem to be focusing on the female characters of their respective teams. There are rumors of a few other movies being worked on, including a Black Widow film from Marvel, and a Black Cat slash Silver Sable film through Sony. There are also some female-centric TV superheroes that have either been released or are coming soon. Jessica Jones is currently working on its third season through Netflix, although that may be coming to an end as Netflix and Marvel's relationship seems to be nearing its finale. And DC has Supergirl as part of the Arrowverse. Currently being worked on are a Scarlet Witch TV show for Disney's upcoming streaming service, and possibly a Batwoman series to join Supergirl on the CW. So the current slate of female-led movie and TV heroes still isn't where most of us would like it to be. But the big question is, who should be next? I've already mentioned Black Widow as a possibility for an upcoming film. I definitely think she deserves a leading role at this point. With The Winter Soldier, we got a superhero film that was part political thriller, but with a Black Widow solo film, they could really lean into the spy genre. Most likely, we would get to learn more about the, quote, red in her ledger from this solo film. And Scarlett Johansson has proven that she can bring in an audience. As a former Soviet spy who defected to America, there are tons of potential stories that could be plucked straight from today's headlines to give us a thrilling adventure film with a superhero twist. Next up, let's introduce someone new to the MCU that hasn't appeared yet. Now that we're getting a Captain Marvel movie, I want to see her biggest fan appear in live action as well. Kamala Khan, a second-generation Pakistani immigrant, turns out to also be an inhuman whose powers were activated when the Terragenesis cloud passed through Jersey City. Now she fights crime as the shape-shifting hero Ms. Marvel. In addition to being a female superhero, she's also a Muslim superhero, so some much-needed diversity would get added to the MCU in a couple of different ways. She's a pretty recent addition to the regular Marvel Universe, as her first appearance was only five years ago, but in that time she's built up quite the vocal fanbase online. 
her happy-go-lucky fangirl attitude would be a welcome addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in my opinion. Let's move over to the other comic cinematic universe, DC's World of Heroes. We've got Wonder Woman on the big screen and Supergirl on the small screen, so the two best-known female characters are being represented right now. A lot of the second-tier women in the DCU are on TV with Titans and the Arrowverse, including Black Canary, Vixen, Gypsy, Raven, Starfire, and others. So let's go slightly more obscure. There's a couple of heroes that were part of the Justice League in the 80s and 90s that would make a great pair and have an interesting visual motif. Fire and Ice. From Brazil and Norway, respectively, these two would make a great odd couple type pairing. Their powers and their personalities are nearly exact opposites, but they end up becoming best friends in the comics. Originally known as Green Fury, then Green Flame, and Ice Maiden, the two changed their superhero names together to represent how close they had become. I imagine the movie would be a buddy cop type picture, but with superheroes. The two would be paired together for whatever reasons, and have to learn to work together despite their conflicting attitudes. Finally, one more DC character that I think should be given her own movie, Zatanna. She's appeared in past animated and live-action DC shows, including Batman the Animated Series, Smallville, and Young Justice. So a lot of people will already be somewhat familiar with her, which makes her a good way to introduce magic into the DC movie universe, the way Doctor Strange brought sorcery into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For those unfamiliar, Zatanna is a stage magician who also practices real magic. She and her father Zatara have both been on the list of the greatest magicians of all time, and together taught Bruce Wayne how to be an escape artist while he was training to become Batman. Father and daughter cast their spells through backwards speech, a trick that works best in comics where you can take the time to read what they are saying by reversing the letters in your head. However, having seen it work on the small screen, I have no problem believing that this method of spellcasting could also translate to the big screen. Perhaps with subtitles, letting the audience know what was said. There are plenty of evil magicians that Zatanna could face, including Felix Faust, Clarion, and Anton Arcane. In terms of themes, most likely her first movie would have a character arc for her where she has to live up to her father's legacy in some manner. In all of these cases, I don't think there are any specific stories that should necessarily be adapted. Movies and comics are separate mediums, and a story that works well in one won't automatically translate to the other. I would rather see writers create new tales for these characters, rather than try to rehash a story that's already been told. So, Justin, I think that about covers your questions on women superheroes. But I'd love to hear others' thoughts on the subject as well. Do you have another heroine in mind? Alternatively, did one of the women I mentioned get you curious to find out more? Send me an email at welcometogeektown at gmail.com with your questions or comments, or leave them directly on the show notes at www.welcome to, the number two in this case, geektown.com. Other contact options include facebook.com slash welcome to geektown or twitter at geektown podcast. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and give me a five-star review over on iTunes to join the Geektown City Council so you can help other people find the show and we can all tell them, welcome to Geektown, population, us. Welcome to Geektown is written, narrated, edited, and produced by me, Kurt Onstead. Theme music is by Aaron Lovitz, logo art by Archie Santana. All other sound clips are the copyrighted material of their respective owners, and no infringement is intended, falling under fair use.